The answer to 1984 is 1776. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. The NFL and every other Hollywood-connected group of narcissistic, self-entitled, rich dirtbags have lined up like cowards, believing they'll break the will of the American people when all they're doing is irrevocably separating the boys from the men. As the true patriots in America of every color come together and forever separate ourselves from the globalists and the pushers of guilt. That's all coming up, but first, the looming threat of nuclear war. North Korea says the U.S. has already declared war. Following President Trump's condemnation of tyrannical dictatorships at the United Nations last week, North Korean Foreign Minister Ri Yong-ho made the dangerous assumption that the United States has declared war with North Korea. And North Korea's Foreign Minister said that President Trump had declared war on North Korea and that it reserves the right to take countermeasures, including shooting down U.S. aircraft. Does the White House view President Trump's comments at the U.N. as a declaration of war? Not at all. We've not declared war on North Korea, uh, and frankly, the suggestion of that is absurd. The absurd reality that a person like Trump, a mentally deranged person, full of megalomania and complacence, the person who is chastised even by American people as commander in grief, Lion King, President Evil, is holding the seat of the U.S. president and the dangerous reality that the gambler who grew old using threats, frauds, and all other schemes to acquire a patch of land holds the nuclear button. These are what constitute the gravest threat to the international peace and security today. During his eight months in power, he has turned the White House into a noisy marketing place full of crackling sounds of abacus bees. And now he has tried to turn the UN arena into a gangster's nest where money is respected and bloodshed is the order of the day. He tried to insult the supreme dignity of my country by referring it to a rocket. By doing so, however, he committed an irreversible mistake of making our rockets visit to the entire U.S. mainland inevitable all the more. In case innocent lives of the U.S. are harmed because of this suicide attack, Trump will be held totally responsible. What else could be a bigger threat than the violent remarks such as pouring fire and fury, total destruction coming from the top authority of the world's biggest nuclear power. The very reason the DPRK had to possess nuclear weapons is because of the U.S. and it had to strengthen and develop its nuclear force onto the current level to cope with the U.S. The only valid philosophical principle is that force must be dealt with force and nuclear weapons of tyranny must be dealt with nuclear hammer of justice. Yeah. President Trump responded in a tweet saying, just heard foreign minister of North Korea speak at UN. If he echoes thoughts of little rocket man, they won't be around much longer. This exchange gives Kim Jong-un's irrational dictatorship all the propaganda it needs to shoot down U.S. bombers that have been performing drills in international waters. Meanwhile, serious sanctions are underway as China bans exports of petroleum products and imports of North Korean textiles beginning October 1st. Additionally, President Trump signed off on a ban of travelers from North Korea, Chad, and Venezuela, barring senior government officials from those countries from obtaining non-immigrant visas. North Korea is just beginning to feel the pressure of President Trump's rallying of the international community to take the DPRK seriously. John Bound reporting for Infowars.com. We're locked and loaded. Spread the word. North Korea is saying they will preemptively strike the United States and have threatened the American people to remove Donald Trump from office or they'll basically hit us with hydrogen bombs dipped on 
top of intercontinental ballistic missiles. They've been terrorizing their own slave population for almost 70 years, and now they think they can shake their fist at us and do the same thing. Former congressman and all-around really intelligent historian and medical doctor, Ron Paul will be joining us coming up at the start of the next hour. He's written a big article that's up at newswars.com, and it's also on infowars.com. Ron Paul, how to end the Korea crisis. Kim joins Saddam, Gaddafi, Assad on a list of madmen, says Paul. And Kim Jong-un better understand, when they start calling you a madman at the Pentagon, that means you're about to get killed, buddy. And I don't want this to happen. I don't want to have to go to nuclear brinksmanship, but you are about to get blown off the map just like the Germans, just like the Japanese, and just like everybody else. So you want it. All your little stupid communist outfits, you're about to get it. And I understand the globalists are in the middle of this, and I understand America's got problems, and I understand all that, but I was against the Iraq war. I was against backing the Arab Spring. I was against all the wars that turned out to be frauds. But this one is real and never stopped since 1953. It's just been hit on pause. Like you're playing a video game, you hit pause, or you're watching a movie, you hit pause, you, you know, go take care of something, come back an hour later. Well, you come back, how many years has it been since 1953? How many years has it been since 1953? 60 plus years and the game never stopped and we've got the third generation of a hereditary dictator there and I understand it's not just that if we nuke North Korea then other countries may preemptively hit us down the road they might do it that day or India and Pakistan who've already been threatened to nuke each other might do it or India and China they say war is like a virus, and once it starts spreading at that level, it gets out of control. Like fire, war is extremely dangerous, and in times of global crisis, political unrest, economic unrest, global hysteria, large populations, things of this nature come to a head and planets align in a very dangerous way that adds accelerant to the fire like 150 mile an hour winds on a dry day through the forest. And I've got four children. I know that I thank God and my lucky stars every single day that we're not already in the middle of a giant nuclear war that we've survived this long. And so I certainly don't at some primitive level want to show Kim Jong-un Who's the better man? And I, you know, I associate nationalistic with America. And so I want to have a war so I can have some more national pride. The truth is our government gave them the nuclear reactors and the missiles to create a strategy of tension in the region, in the region and have an excuse for us to be there. But we didn't originally put the communists in. We fought them as far as Korea goes. We did put Mao in in 47, 48, 49 fully, just a few years before this war started, and he turned around and stabbed America in the back and saw us as weak and decided he was going to take Korea, Vietnam, and everything else. But the intellectuals inside our government thought communism was a better system because they'd be in charge of it. There's an article up on newswars.com right now where a West Point grad who's a Kaepernick fan has written inside of his hat, communism will win right as he's graduating. That image, that photo, that story is up on infowars.com and newswars.com. We'll be getting to it, and we just tweeted it out. At Real Alex Jones. There's a lot of powerful forces in each country manipulating to get more control over their populations and to obviously power grab even more control.
But what you've got is a bunch of people in this nation that have been taught that it's cool, that have been taught that it's fun, that have been taught that that's how they get attention, that have been taught that the more chips on your shoulder you have, it's like more degrees. And the bigger a thumb sucker you are and the lazier you are and the more entitled you are and the more arrogant you are, the more powerful you are. But of course you're not. You're losers. And the NFL and other gladiatorial diversions are what helped lull America to sleep. And we decided that the NFL was America. Not our coal mines, not our industry, not our churches, not our beliefs, not our Second Amendment, not our religious freedom, not our strength, not our will, not our dogged, rugged individualistic spirit that refuses to back down. No, we were taught that men out there in simulated combat were the greatest heroes. And as the society became decadent and more narcissistic and corrupt and more godless and more pathetic, just as Hollywood became completely degenerate and completely anti-American, so have all the other spoiled bastions of elitism. And now their final enjoyment is politically hating their own fans, culturally hating their own fans, and having giant entitled pity parties directed by the most vicious, ruthless think tanks and crime syndicates and multinational combines the world has ever seen. If you ever wanted to witness the full bore battering ram attack to knock down America and to break our will and to bully us into globalist submission, to hate ourselves, to hate our flag, to hate our freedom, to hate our military, to hate everything, because we're the big object to capture for global domination. You capture America, you have the world. The communists, the socialists, put in by robber barons, protected by the technocrats to this day, because they shit and enslave their people. They squat on top their slave populations. They are who the globalists want to deal with. In Carol Quigley's own words at Georgetown, top political science professor there, author of Tragedy and Hope, trainer of hundreds and hundreds of high-level State Department and CIA officials to understand the great vision, the great worldview, the great program of authoritarianism by every flavor, by every color of the rainbow, but still the great goal of total global domination and social engineering over every aspect of human activity to the point of rendering a rebellion by the people as is impossible as a rebellion of sheep against the practice of eating mutton, to quote Bertrand Russell. They have many tools to control us. They first claim they have the moral high ground, that they're the intellectuals. They claim they're the resistance. They claim they're battling the establishment when they at the NFL and they in Hollywood and they in the big TV networks and the entertainment combines are all extensions of the true global ruling class that wishes to dynamite the ladders of ascendancy for their fellow humans so that they can control the development, both culturally, evolutionary, and spiritually, of the human species. It's a cold-blooded, full-bore, 110% pure, Selfish power grab. And look at what we have here. Three years of people kneeling and bitching at the bloated, pathetic NFL as their ratings are down more than 35% from just three years ago. And as the stadiums are more than half empty, in some areas it's down by 50, 60% on average 40. Got the numbers right here. That's flatlining. And I love all the decadent, slob-like, pathetic, I'm going to skip this break, owners all trying to lock arms together against America 
thinking that if they can just break the will of Trump, that somehow the fans will come back when what you've done is assured that 30, 40 percent is never coming back. And another 20 or 30 percent will soon follow. And then they're going to stop watching you on TV entirely because everybody's got a sick feeling now that they're in the enemy camp, that they're being preyed on by a bunch of losers when they're part of this. And so a beautiful thing is happening because... They captured the NFL. They captured American institutions. They've been beating us over the head with them. And now because they pushed and pushed and pushed into all the sanctums of where people just wanted to take off time and sit around and, you know, watch the Fox Sunday football with Terry Bradshaw and all the rest of them to just see unified America hate, unified virtue signaling, unified hype. Unified peer pressure by a bunch of followers and a bunch of losers. Because if you don't bow to what the globalists want, and then and it'll be every other little social signal after this. If you don't give in to this, if you don't do whatever they say, if you don't accept that you're bad and you're racist and you're evil, and that you've got to politically do whatever they say in this new cult you're in, well, we're going to get you fired. You know, the Hispanic gentleman, I won't even say his name now because it's, it's, it's a shameful name, not an honorable name to a great extent. They threatened to fire him just like the, the coach said he was looking at dis disciplining him on Sunday. He was the lone stealer, Alejandro, that would come out, Army veteran, Army Ranger veteran, and put his hand over his chest. You see, the rest of the team had said, no, we're a cult. You don't have free speech. We can act like we're pissing on Trump in the, in the end zone. That's okay. Nobody gets fined for that. We can cuss during the national anthem. We can do whatever we want. Just don't go put your hand over your chest. That's a no-no. You violated the team. You're bad. We're going to fire you. So he came out and said, I'm ashamed of myself of what I did. Because they're threatening his... What is he getting paid? Four, five, six million dollars a year? They're threatening his paycheck. In the end, Alejandro Villanueva's beliefs were more complicated than many wanted to hear. Oh, it's a complicated thing because he's looking at getting fired now. So he says he's ashamed. They go, just forget about him. Let him get his paycheck. It was complicated. He says, I apologize. I'm ashamed of myself. I made my teammates look bad. These are all quotes. That's the cult we live in in America, folks, where you write in your hat at West Point that communism will win and put your fist up. You're about to get a job probably running a subdirector of a major intelligence agency. You, you call yourself reality winner. You say you hate white people. They should all be genocided. And you want to join ISIS? You get promoted to running an entire NSA FBI database. You say you hate America, you're going to the top. You're like Jack Posobiec, quietly enable intelligence for his country, based over in Asia, you name it, comes back, fights for the Trump campaign, helps him win, running one of his biggest groups. They say, oh, the president likes Jack Posobiec. He, he loses his security clearance. Let's kick him out of the Navy if we can. But man, another guy pulls open a Che Guevara shirt and says communism will win. And you know now in the halls of power, young man, you're a good traitor. You're going to lower that drawbridge and bring down the republic. We need scum like you. Good job. That's how late the hour is. And look at these clips we've got coming up. NBA coach. White people especially need to be made to feel uncomfortable. Oh, like the 10 to 1 attacks on whites by blacks because they deserve it? The black folks in the... I've got a couple crime reports right here. The guy that went in and shot a bunch of people, killing folks at that Tennessee church because they were white and Christian, and he was an immigrant from Sudan and a Muslim. He said on his Facebook, and he confessed to the police, he said, I wanted to kill a bunch of white people because they're racist. Well, if they weren't before, they might be now, and I think that's a bad thing. No, white folks on average see through all this. 
I wonder if there'll be anybody taking knees for those folks that got shot in the face, in the back. No. In fact, remember a year ago, the NFL, the, the Dallas Cowboys wouldn't even have a few seconds for the five dead police officers, a couple of them black in Dallas, who got shot in the back by Black Lives Matter and killed, and they denied the request. They told the Dallas Police Department, you got to pay money for that. And, of course, you know the NFL's getting paid. You know it's come out. They're getting paid for everything you see them do, all this anti-American crap. They're getting paid by big foundations. Just like Comedy Central's getting paid to put out a show every night of the week, lying about yours truly, misrepresenting what I say and what I do. And I don't even know if I'll even address that, though they want fodder for their little show because... They're not really that important. But it is important to address the propaganda. And in the piece, they let you know, their first show last night, who the enemy is. And you notice China, I first told you this about a decade ago, but now it's been all the news. China finances the majority of U.S. movies and all six of the big movie houses, the production companies. And they pay, in some cases, $20 million per film to just show a line of communist Chinese flags, to show a pilot bureau, and to have the Chinese president, who's a dictator, save the world from the aliens. They paid money for that in Arrival. Look it up. They paid money in the Martian that America couldn't produce booster rockets to get to Mars in the rescue mission, but the Chinese had rockets. They had to get them from us. The U.S. won't even let us produce our own rockets now as part of a strategic sabotage under Obama. We have to get them from the Russians. The United States had as good of boosters as the Russians have now in the 70s, but the plans were destroyed under secret executive order. That's right, the plans drawn up by the German scientists were destroyed. More globalist sabotage. And one of these shows, the opposition, because see, in the show he goes, we're the conservatives, we're the opposition to the resistance. That's the big lie. When we're the resistance, Trump's the resistance, you're the resistance. We have the whole power structure, the whole globalist force. The communist Chinese, the Pope, Hollywood, the media, the big think tanks, the big telecoms, the big computer companies, the big social networks, Facebook, Twitters, Googles, all against Trump and America and a resurgence. And the NBA and the, and the National Baseball League and all of it, all lined up against us. And little Infowars is one of the big threats. Little, little Infowars. And then the first thing they tell you in their promo, China isn't real. No, brother. We've sent our reporters many times to China. We've had our reporters inside North Korea. I get on the phone and talk to high-level people in the agencies, you name it, the president. What do you mean, I don't know that China's real? That's what they sell, that we're these insular country bumpkins that don't know. No, no. I know China is probably, in fact, let's look into it, because I know they're funding Time Warner Productions, and I know they've had a bunch of mergers and stuff. Isn't Comedy Central? I meant to do this this morning to check it. I don't even pay attention. Aren't, aren't they owned by Time Warner? Please look that up for me. No, I, I, I know. Comedy Central. Who owns Comedy Central? Who owns Comedy Central? Let's put that in a search engine. And I guarantee you, because I know Time Warner gets money from the Communist Chinese. I know Universal. I know Fox. I know they all do. So I said, notice I went from memory. I, it's either Viacom or it's because it, it's been going back and forth. So Viacom, it's owned by Viacom. Viacom gets massive money. They own CBS. They own a bunch of the production houses. Viacom's the biggest media company in the world. Shumner Redstone is its founder. Viacom Group. And they are so in bed with the communist Chinese, it'll make your head spin. So now when they go, look at these dumbass nationalist Americans, Alex Jones, he says China isn't real. Hey, that's a lie. You think that little candy-ass host that reads off teleprompters knows their demographics, their numbers, uh, about the Chen dynasty, their wars against Japan, the history of what happened in South Korea, all the different angles 
about Shane Kai checked the nationalist, how the CIA put Mao in, uh, all the different white papers written about how the CIA supported. No, no, they don't know any of that. I, I know so much on China, it makes my head hurt. But see, we can get a skinny, slender, you know, guy with a psychopath physique, and he can sit there and wolf like tell you that Alex Jones doesn't know anything. That Alex Jones says China isn't real. And they call it the opposition. And, and they've got a term here about mental nationalism. Well, if you don't have nationalism in your own interest at heart, you're called a slave. But see, they, they invent these new words. The media acts like they're great linguists. But they have giant teams of hundreds pouring over this crap they put out. It's not even funny. They all hail it as God. And they spew all this bull. It's all coming up today. Congressman Ron Paul on a plan to stop the North Korean crisis. That's on Infowars.com as well, but we're, we're not intellectual like you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here broadcasting worldwide. I am your host, Alex Jones. And we're here Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. We also uh, have the Real News with David Knight. That is weekday mornings from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. when I go live. And then right after we end at 3 p.m. Central, you have Owen Schroyer and, of course, the great War Room as we battle for the Republic against the globalist. Uh, Roger Stone gave us his exclusive uh, last night video and the text of his testimony to Congress behind closed doors today on the Russiagate situation. As soon as he comes out today, I'll have a live video press conference uh, that will be happening. that will be fed on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. DrudgeReport.com is linked to the exclusive video testimony and the exclusive text at DrudgeReport.com as well. So we'll give you more on that as it unfolds. More on North Korea, more on the NFL. But this NFL thing is absolutely gigantic. Because they're trying to break our will. And they're trying to say in your own country, your flag's racist, your nation's bad. And then once you learn to bow, quite literally bowing to Zod, Superman, bow to Zod. Uh, that's not just in fiction, that's in the real world. When, once you show your subservience to George Soros and their psychological warfare combine, where they've used cultural differences to bring down the Middle East, to bring down Eastern Europe, to bring down countless nations and peoples. They're now doing it here, and it's in the WikiLeaks that they're using culture war to carry that out. And we've got the Republican establishment that is involved in it as well. We're going to get to that in a moment. The very powerful words of Stephen Bannon. But know this, globalism is a consortium of other nations and mega corporations empowered by slave labor via China to dominate and take control of the nation state of America and to culturally and economically deindustrialize us and break our will. And whether it's Viacom or whether it's News Corp or whether it's Time Warner, there's only six big movie houses owned by Five big companies that have 95% of mainstream media control, and they are all now chiefly financed by the communist Chinese because they're going bankrupt. First, they sell the country out. First, they impoverish the nation. Then they make all their major films China-centric and communist-supportive. And now we see Bill Maher, HBO, we see all these Hollywood stars saying, we like Kim Jong-un, we hate Trump. Trade leaders with us. That's very sick and very evil, even if you hate Trump. But that's how far they've gone in the financing of Hollywood by communist China. And when you look at Viacom and Comedy Central that it owns, and you look at how all their major programs attack yours truly, and the president and others and misrepresent what we say, and take it out of context to demonize us and tell us that they're the resistance. Yeah, they're the globalist resistance to America. 
and they are against this country just like the NFL is. They are disgusting and they've all got to be cut off. They've got to be fully bankrupted. And they're jokes. And they know that they're bought and paid for. They're consciously against this country. And that's why every major movie you see that's based in science fiction or based in modern affairs or based in military activity, the communist Chinese come in and save America. Hell, the, the director of the Transformers is coming out with a movie that's based on Escape from New York where the communist Chinese join with the U.S. military in a coup to remove Trump. I mean, this is naked. And all you need to know about the opposition is there the establishment and that Comedy Central is the opposition to America and they are the opposition to the resistance and when they put up stuff like China isn't real and stuff like that it's like Lloyd Blankfein coming out a few months ago when Trump had infrastructure week and said how's that going for you Trump knowing Congress was blocking it and saying, I just got back from China. We're moving our main operations. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, and the slave plants are great. And the suicide nets are great. And the forced abortion is great. And the organ harvesting of Christians and Buddhists is great. But it doesn't matter because you're Lloyd Blankfein. And you've got this sick thing about somebody was rude to your grandpa in New York once when he got off a boat or something. So you think if you just destroy America and hate America, that somehow it's going to empower you, even though you are America, Lloyd Blankfein. And the media thinks it's cute in CNBC. Oh, look how he trolled the president and talked about how pathetic we are. Yay! Let's all get on the traitor bandwagon. We're going to break all this down, and I'm going to get back into the Harry Carey, the seppuku, the suicide for all the linguists over there at Viacom that are so delicate geniuses and so, so smart and teach us how conservatives are low information voters. When I've been out to your crowds, they're the dumbest, ugliest, stupidest people I've ever seen in the Democratic Party. I mean, they're sad. I feel sorry for them. They look like they got hit by a mental retardation beam. And like they've been drinking fluoride, oh, I guess they have, which CNN now has to admit causes mutation, brain damage, everything else. The entire Dallas Cowboy team takes a knee, gets booed. Flashback, NFL denied Cowboys request to honor cops slain in Dallas. CNN, MSNBC, slave master Trump wants race war, wishes blacks were kneeling in the cotton fields again. Well, that's all made up, but I do know what's happening. Whites all over the place are getting killed, and a lot of poor immigrants from Eastern Europe that are white are moving into black areas, and every couple days they get shot or hit over the head with a hammer or killed, and people say, I killed them because they're white. Black lives matter, as if Eastern Europeans had anything ever to do with the slave trade. You look at Arabs, almost all Arabs' lineage were involved in the slave trade. That's all they had there in the desert was slave trading and controlling of the different... Uh, Trade routes, the silk routes and others. That's what Mecca was. It was a big slave bazaar. Maybe 2% of Americans that, that were here before 1868 had slaves. 2%. Most whites come from sharecroppers that were slaves. There was indentured servitude in Europe, the same thing, serfdom, feudalism. Look it up for all the big linguists over at Viacom. Oh, they know what it is. They're not going to tell you about it. We are. And they sit there totally cold-bloodedly knowing what they're doing. And, oh, notice you're not going to hear any more in the news now because it happened two days ago. A black guy, a racist black Muslim that we brought into our country and gave everything. Not even working a job, big old swole up roid head on a narcissistic power trip of himself. Went and killed some whites, went and found some whites. And too bad one of them had a gun and you know, shot back. We could have killed more people. But you, you know, enjoy the supermax prison you're going to there. You'll probably get released, though. It's all cute. It's all fun. You're not going to hear anything about him. You're not going to hear any whites bitching, either. And, like, blaming all blacks for it. Jesse Jackson, Trump's NFL statement show, slave master, servant mentality. NBA coach, white people had to be made to feel uncomfortable. 
another virtue signaling idiot of the Spurs. Tennessee church shooter admits to crime as bizarre Facebook post surfaces. But again, that's okay. You're not going to hear anything about those guys. You're not going to hear any virtue signaling about that because that's a white devil. That's a bunch of white devils that got shot and killed. Oh, but don't worry. In Berkeley, they allowed the march against white supremacy to happen. Nobody attacked that because it was the Antifa scum and the faculty having their march. But they banned Milo and everybody else and then physically attacked my reporters who I didn't order to go. They wanted to go. Millie Weaver and, uh, and Gavin Wentz. And then they broke into her car and ransacked it and tore up our equipment. There's video of that up on Infowars.com. But that's okay. You don't have a right to speak have speech and then when we catch you filming us in our speeches we're going to follow back to your car and rob it and, and, and tear it up and then we're going to attack women but that because see they're the heroes fighting hitler so it's okay it's fun it's a bunch of wimps that just live here in the country and direct violence and then say I just came and shot your church up. I just came and beat up a woman. I just came and shut down your free speech. I just robbed your car. I just shot a cop in the back. And you know what? You're the bad person. Now kiss my ass and get on your knees before me while I piss in your face. And they've got the NFL player. We can show it. Hiking his leg and acting like he pee-peed. Oh, he didn't get fined for that, though. Because, you know, you work for the team. You're not allowed to have your own speech on the field. Not allowed to flip folks off or whatever, but, oh, you can practice peeing on the president and then later say, no, I'm practicing pissing on the, because that's what it is. It's peeing, right? It's dominating you. We're only paid $20 million a year. I hate this country because Viacom told me to. Sumner Redstone told me to. Yeah, well, old Sumner Redstone got locked up by his family. He's hanging on by his fingernails right now like he did off that balcony in that fire. But he's not going to be able to hold on forever. Oh, no. And the devil, his God, is waiting with a big open mouth. Just oh, right there for you, Sumner. And all the rest of the scum at Viacom. <laughs> We're going to do some big reports on the Chinese money going into Viacom. The communist state-run money going into Viacom. And that story's up on News Wars, peeing in America's face. InfoWars reporter car vandalized. That's okay. They deserve it. Violent crime rises in U.S. in Democratic cities. Two years running. Oh, yeah, actually getting killed by black on black 90 plus percent of the time, but that's okay. Most of the blacks are getting aborted. That's all right with the liberals because they're there to enslave them and everybody else. And the racial attacks on whites only intensifies every day. And it just gets in the back of the paper. They usually won't even say who did it. But first, let me get into this right now. Bannon warns GOP establishment, your day of reckoning is coming. And, I, and I'm really proud of Bannon trying to keep Trump on the straight and narrow and being run out by the generals and others. And he really is supporting right folks. He really is supporting good, real Tea Party, libertarian, Americana, what you call yellow dog Democrat type folks as well, just people that aren't out to get the country. And you've got this whole race going on in Alabama. And he just leveled his political guns Right on the people around the president. He said the president's a great guy, but he got misinformed about who to back. And now it's an example of a fight over the heart and soul of the Republican Party of who wins this runoff election, this primary Republican election. And here are some of these powerful clips from Bannon. First, let's get to this clip. Bannon on NFL protest. They should take a knee every night and thank God Donald Trump's president. Because even though he disagrees with some of what Trump's doing, just like. Senator Paul said on this show a few months ago, and just like he, his father, I guarantee he'll say next hour, we ought to thank God every day we got Trump in because Hillary would have been even worse on war and the economy and so many other issues. But here's Bannon on NFL protest. You know, about taking a knee for the national anthem, I said in this speech tonight, if people in this country take a knee and the National Football League players want to take a knee, they should take a knee at night, every night. 
and thank God in heaven Donald J. Trump is President of the United States. He has saved this country so much grief. He has done such a tremendous job with virtually no help. And that's what I meant when I said that. I stepped out to make sure that Mitch McConnell in the Republican establishment starts to have a Republican back. Because you know what? Mitch McConnell wouldn't be majority leader if Donald Trump didn't drag a half a dozen senators across the goal line in November. So it's time for the Republican establishment to step up and have the back of President Trump. Steve Bannon's the real deal. Blue collar, Democrat, union family. Whole nine yards, and he understands the scam against all working people. And if you want real prosperity, folks, just let let the Bannon plan get delivered. It's classic Americana, JFK program. And that's why the globalists are pissed, man. They think this country's theirs. The communist Chinese have bought controlling interest in all five major mega companies and all six subsidiary movie production houses, studios. I mean, that's how far gone we are, folks. Every episode of these Comedy Central shows have some Chinese communist worship piece. So those dictators over there that keep Christians in cages and sell their organs and have factories with suicide nets around them can sit there and feel powerful. And so these media outlets get access to the Chinese communist market. Can you imagine what sellout scum these people are? They're all a bunch of failed comedians and actors that read off teleprompters that enemies of this country fill. Nobody's, give them a document cam shot around the room. Give them a shot. There's no, there's no script here. Only the truth and red, white, and blue and take it to the enemy. And we're going to win. Stephen Bannon, the GOP elite. Represented by Mitch McConnell, hold me in contempt. I swear their contempt as a badge of honor. Absolutely. I love that fact. It's incredible. It's a badge of honor. Let's go to that next clip. The Republican, the, the, the elites represented by Mitch McConnell, right, hold me in contempt, right? They think I'm a bad guy. They think I'm a dangerous guy. I wear their contempt as a badge of honor, okay? They, are, they, have, they have helped destroy this country. They have done nothing but allow economic hate crimes against the working men and women in the heartland of this country. The factories went to China and the drugs came in, okay? We've got to stop it. Tomorrow in Alabama, the good folks in Alabama got a, got a choice. This is Jeff Sessions' seat, Sean. You know how close I am to Jeff Sessions. I know how close you are to Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions has been our mentor. Jeff Sessions is a man with a pure heart and tough as boot leather. This seat is Jeff Sessions' seat. Just look at Bannon's eyes, but also watch his actions. It's just straightforward. It's the truth. You look at all the Politico weasels in both parties, they're mentally ill. They care about what the fake system thinks. They have no integrity. They have no moral compass. They have no rudder. They have no North Star. They have no God, but just self-aggrandizement. And then that does not fulfill. It just drives you deeper into the mental illness. Bannon at Roy Moore rally. We're going to give you that. Stephen Bannon smacks around the swamp at the rally. Those clips are coming up. And then former Congressman Ron Paul, the latest on North Korea and how to hopefully stop World War III. This is the Info War. Please spread the word. We are back live. Paul Ryan has announced a plan to try to raise taxes. They know that'll kill the economy. That's their goal. That's why they wrote Obamacare. Yeah, the Republicans wrote it. The Democrats love it. Because they love being schmucks, being screwed over by the bipartisan criminals. In other news, flashback, Trump warns parents to watch out for pervert Wiener. Says, keep your young daughters away from him. He's a pervert. Of course, he's convicted of that now. Trump said it back in 2012. What do you think Trump's talking about? He also tweeted about pedophile rings and said they should all be executed. And they are being arrested at record levels. So then I've seen articles in Time Magazine, Newsweek. AOL saying, oh, no, it's a myth. That's a talking point. There aren't pedophile rings being busted. It doesn't exist. Yeah, like the deputy pope and Senator Menendez and all the rest of it. You people are crazy. You are something else, man. Wow. Can you imagine working for Comedy Central and posing as a news reporter when you're really a comic and then reading off a teleprompter and defending this? 
What a bunch of desperate losers. So that's all coming up as well. But yeah, Republicans to raise taxes, consumer confidence falls, new home sales hit eight month low. And uh, you know, they were trying to get the consumer confidence up, did get some of the new jobs up, but didn't get the stock market up. But if they can just hold those tax cuts up a little bit longer and keep Obama caring a little bit longer, they can they can get you and make you real poor and have to live off handouts. And boy, isn't that sad? Because they know if we got an open free market, you'll vote for what you want, which is freedom, and then they won't be in charge. See, <laughs> too bad, isn't it? Just too bad. But intellectually, we're breaking with them. And so the NFL and all of them can go bankrupt with us as well. How's that sound? And Hollywood and Viacom and all the rest of you people. You were all living off laundered money. You're all living off a bunch of Ponzi schemes that make Bernie Madoff look like a choir boy. And it's all going to come down, scum. Everybody knows you're the establishment. Nice bait and switch. We are the resistance. If you're watching this transmission or listening to it, you are the resistance, not Viacom, the biggest media company in the world. Dedicated every day to lying about yours truly. A badge of unbelievable honor. But when I see your mind control slaves, the ones in the street that try to attack me, who repeat the things that are on Colbert's show and, and all these other programs, that's why I said they've been put into a mentally retarded state. And I mean that. It's very sad. Now, if you want to break with these people, and if you want to go up against them, and if you want to absolutely break their will, you financially support us, that's the big Comedy Central attack is that we have money to fund ourselves. We sell things. Oh, my God. We're not Viacom trying to sexualize kids at age four. Admittedly, at Nickelodeon, I'm sorry, we're not the Nickelodeon pedophile channel or whatever it is, the sexualization channel. Uh, yeah, and, and, and you can fund us and get high-quality things you need, like water filtration is discounted today, 20%, to not drink the fluoride, which CNN now admits causing massive brain damage. You can get high-quality supplements like X2. You can get high-quality products. You can get high-quality shirts like CNN's fake news to spread the word and exercise free speech. You can get 40% off our great, pure, organic, highest rated by even outside labs that hate our guts. Highest rated even by BuzzFeed. Means we have the highest rated, they texted it, highest rated uh, B12 that their lab test. <laughs> they hated that. They inadvertently had to admit it, though. They were like, yes, it's pure B12. And yeah, well, man, they know. But here's the best, this lab says. And happens to be who we private label from. <laughs> so anyways, break their will. Spread the links. Spread the articles. Pray for InfoWars. And buy the products. InfoWarsStore.com. InfoWarsLife.com. Or 888-253-3139. We also just launched a bunch of great private labeled essential oils for 25% off what they are in stores. InfoWarsStore.com. Finance the resistance. Finance the rebellion. Finance the victory. Stay with us.